Alright everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense and we'll continue our journey of Apex Developer Masterclass and we'll continue understanding some scenarios, understanding the use of conditionals, operators, collections, loops via our practice questions. So the last use case we did was the certification tracker. In this video, we'll talk about creating a library tracker, right? So we'll create a method that lets you store your books that you have in your library so you'll create a book repository for yourself okay and then you'll create methods to track which user has borrowed a book and what is the book name okay so which user has borrowed a book and what is the name of the book that the user has borrowed okay so let's jump into salesforce and let's create our new apex class so i'll call it library tracker okay now you might be thinking why are we doing such use cases which are not relevant to database updates or they are not relevant to uh, actual actual things that we do day in and day out in Salesforce. This is this is pretty much for ensuring and practicing collections, conditionals, loops as much as we can through some practice questions so that our foundation is layered with some level of practice. Okay, so for those of you who are comfortable with this level of writing code, go ahead, pause the video and try to write the code yourself. For those of you who are new to the video and you have directly landed on this video, start from the very basics, start from the first video of this particular playlist. Okay, and for those of you who are at a good speed and who are following along, let's continue and let's create some methods. Okay, so library tracker, we have created the class here that's called library tracker. I'll quickly create a method. I'll call public static void add books to library. Okay, so what how do I want to store my book information? Let's say I want to store book name. Right, I think that's all I need to store the book name. Correct. So what I'll do is I'll just take the string book name. All right. And what I can do is I can create a variable which would be a static variable and this would contain my list of books so this would be a list of string and i'll say all my books okay i'll just instantiate it by saying new list of string all right save so when you actually see you see me typing these things a bit fast and you you should be following along and trying this on your own what will happen is if you are new to writing code you'll make a lot of mistakes and i want you to make the mistakes i want you to miss out the semicolon or put a double semicolon or don't or not write the syntax properly i want you to see that error showing up and i want you to fix those issues so that will build up your confidence and you know increase your speed of you know coding okay you should be very familiar with writing al aligned and oriented code right writing the names properly all uh, with the best practices okay so your hand should run very fast in terms of you know setting a stub or a template of a code okay and then everyone can write business use cases it's not a big deal all right so now i have a method that's called add books to library what will i do i'll simply say all my books dot add whatever book name is provided i'll just add it all right and that's all so your all my books is a list of string which will hold the names of the books now you might think or else or, or, okay no problem let's proceed with our use case so i've created a method to store my books right i want to create a method to track which user has borrowed a book and what is the book name what i want to do is i want to create a mapping of the book name versus person who borrowed it Correct. So by the time by now you should be guessing what kind of collection do we want to use? We want to use a map again. Okay. This would be string where the first string or rather the key would be the name of the book versus there would be another string which would be the name of the person. Okay. So I'll call it borrower mapping equals new map and this would be string comma string. Okay. Let's get rid of the comment let's try to save it so i've instantiated a borrower mapping variable i'll make this static and i'll make this public so two class variables are defined now what i want to do is i want to introduce another static method and here i want to simply check or let's say here i want to lend books so i'll say lend books to someone okay so i'm trying to lend my books right so if i want to lend my books what do i need i need the name of the book versus i need the person 
right the person name who is borrowing the book from me correct so let's say you need a book right so from my repository of books i'll be lending you the book correct and then i need to create one more method that shows me display books borrowed so this will give me a list of records where i can see which book is currently borrowed by what person as simple as that okay and i'll create one more method that would basically be my current repository so this should tell me all the books that i still currently hold which are with me which are not given to anyone okay so lend books to someone is where i'll use my map and i'll simply put or create an entry in my map what does this mean this means this is the book name which would be the key and this is the person name who has borrowed it all right save so can one book be borrowed by multiple people no i just have one copy of each book right so the book name is the key and it will always be unique in the map all right and every time someone borrows my book i need to update my repository which is my all my books list and remove this particular book correct i need to do, do this so from the list of books that i hold that i have i need to remove the specific book that i have bought, that i have given to someone right so how do we how do we remove it the remove is not a function so let's take a look at the list class and let's try to find a method that will allow us to remove right so i'll just say list class methods apex i'll go back here to my apex developer guide and i want to remove a specific key so if i take a look i have the remove index here right but we do not know what is the index of our list item so we cannot directly use a method correct so what i'll do is i'll iterate over my list all right just see what i do here so i'll say for each book that i hold in all my books variable if each book or rather the book that is currently in the loop is equal to the book name that this person wants to borrow i don't i basically if it is not equal to right let's not do equal to if it is not equal to the book I, that this person wants to borrow i'll create a list called remaining books dot add and i'll add this particular book right so what i'm doing essentially in this loop is i'm taking a look at all my books and i'm seeing if inside all my books let's say i have 75 books if this is the book name that the user is wanting to borrow that he has borrowed or she has borrowed if the name in the loop is not equal to that name add it to my list which is the books that are remaining with me so out of all the 75 74 books will remain with me in this variable correct now remaining books is not a variable because it has not been defined yet so what i'll do is i'll create a variable here which would be a method variable and this would also be a list of string because this will also hold the same data let's go ahead and say save and finally what i'll do is i'll update my repository which is all my books and i'll map it to whatever is my remaining books so this is your way of removing one book from your list all right so this is one way of doing it all right i hope it made sense do you want me to go over it again no problem so we created a method that says add books to library all right so i have added let's say seven or ten books by calling this method one by one so my library is filling up fine it has ten books and now someone came and asked imanshu can you lend me this book i really want to read it so he calls this method puts the book name here and the, I, I put the person name whoever it is who wants to buy or you know borrow the book so i need to lend the book so what i do is i create i have a map wherein i'm storing which book is borrowed by which person so this is that entry so far so good 
and since this person has borrowed it right so it is with him or her i don't have that in my collection anymore so my collection which is this particular variable should not have the book name that i just lent to someone else so what i'm doing is i'm iterating over all my books and if the book that he has requested is not equal to the book that i have currently in my loop i'm just remain you know adding that particular book to my repository again right so if i have book 1 Two, three, four, five, which should be here. So this iteration will run five times. If I have five books in my repository, so it will run for one, two, three, four, and five. And let's say this person has borrowed book number four. So it will come in here. It will check: is one equal to equal to is one not equal to four? True. So it will go ahead and add it. So one got added here. Book one. Similarly, two will be added. Three will be added, and when it comes to four, is four not equal to four? False. It is equal to four, so it will not go inside. It will not add it here, and then it will again add five. So now your final collection of books that you have with you remaining is one, two, three, and five, and whatever is ho being held in this list is being reassigned to your repository, which is your collection. And why am I reassigning it? Because this is the variable that tracks on the class level the list of all the books that you have. Make sense? Perfect. Let's get rid of all these comments and let's proceed to our next method. We'll try it all together. Okay. Now the next thing is display the books borrowed. So how can I display the books that are borrowed by people? I can simply return my map, which is this map right here. As simple as that. So this map, if I return which means I have to change the data type here. I'll have to call it map of string comma string. This will automatically tell you which book has been borrowed by what person because this map has that entire entry. As simple as that. Okay. And then finally, what is your current repository? How do you want to display that? You can display the list of books that you have, which is this variable right here. So I'll return all my books, which I currently have. So this would be a list of string save as simple as that as straightforward as that okay don't think don't get, don't get too complex into you know what we are doing just try to think of you know the actual use case just try to think of how would you do it in real life right so we have just mimicked that same behavior through methods that's it okay don't try to make too much sense out of it but just try to understand you know this is how you can retrieve data this is how you can return data this is how you map your data types this is how you reassign data types this is how you would have to remove an element from a list so i'm showing you different things uh, within a use case okay now let's go ahead and test it out get rid of everything else library tracker dot add books to library i want to add some books that i currently have right so let's go ahead and say ikigai so by the way i'm a big fan of self-help and non-fiction non books i read a lot of them i started this back during covid and since then i've just continued reading and it's been really good so i think everyone should read books yeah so homo deus sapiens the 5am club this is some of my favorite books. All right. So let's say I have these many books I've added to my library. Correct. So I've just collected them and I've added them in my library. Okay. And, and before continuing, I'd request you to comment below. How many books do you think I have in my actual library? All right. I'll share my library with you guys uh, through a photo, but uh, just comment, just give a random number. What you think would be the number of books that I have in my library? Okay. So just comment, comment it out. Perfect. Back to the use case. These are the five books that I have in my library. And now let's say someone has come up and they want to basically take a look at or borrow a book. Right. But before that, I want to take a look at my current repository. So I'll just go ahead and say library tracker dot my current repository. Okay. This method name is not really good. So we'll just call it show my current repository. This makes a bit more sense. So I'll just say show my current repository. So this should show you the list of five books that I hold. All right. And then I would want to lend my book to someone because someone else wants to read it. I have already read it, right? So I'll just say lend my book to someone. So what are the parameters that I need to pass? I need to pass the book name. So first of all, let's say I would pass 
Homo Deus. Right? Let's say this is the book that someone wants to read. And who is the person who wants to read it? Let's say Narender M. All right. This is one book that I've lent to someone. And let's say I've lent the Sapiens book to someone else. All right. So these are the two people who have borrowed a book from me. All right. And now once they have borrowed it, I want to see my final repository of books that I currently hold. And I also want to see the books that I have given to people display borrowed books. Let's go ahead and execute this entire code and let's see how does the data look like. We might not have added debug statements, but let's see what what we can get here. Is there anything? There's nothing. So we'll have to add some debug statements. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and say Let's go ahead and add some debug statements. So we'll go ahead and put a debug statement here. This would be borrower mapping. And this would be my current collection, which is all my books. All right, let's save it. Execute and this time let's execute the entire code piece again execute all right let's take a look at the debug only logs so if you see initially I had one two three four five books which was my entire repository and then one two three are the books that are only left with me and what are the books that I've given to people I've given homo deus to Narendra and sapiens to Mohit right so you're able to see that entire data cool so that was our use case now one more interesting thing is what if you pass in a book or you want to lend a book that does not exist in your repository right so let's say you want to pass in the book that's called the monk who sold his Ferrari right now how do you how do you lend it to someone you don't have that book yourself right because your library does not have it so it's always better to put a check whether you have that book or not Correct. So lend books to someone is this method right here and book name is what I'm trying to insert. Correct. So in the borrower mapping, I cannot lend someone a book that I don't have. So don't you think there should be a check here? The check should be if the book the person wants to borrow. Is it available in my library? First of all, I need to check that right. If available only then give give the only then give the book or else there's no point of giving the book because you don't have it yourself even you need to buy it or borrow it some from someone right so that's the check we want to put so what we'll do is how do you put that check you put a if condition and you say if all my books right for those of you who have seen the list videos you should be knowing this method if all my books dot contains that's the method name if it contains if my list contains the book name only then go ahead and put a mapping in the borrower because that means that I have the book if it does not contain no point of doing it so this entire code can go inside this particular if condition because you will execute this only if only if you have the book in your library correct so that's a check that you have put so you can add more checks here if you want right but yeah that's a fair enough use case that I wanted to discuss perfect so that was our library tracker use case we'll take a look at the next practice question <laughs> Thank you.